Hello, my name is Pam Teal, and I'm the chair of the Renton Schools Foundation. Welcome to the 2021 Renton Schools Foundation Virtual Day of Giving. And I'm Damian Padnot, proud superintendent of the Renton School District. When I think back to the beginning of this pandemic, the last year has undoubtedly been full of challenges. However, what has been impressive is the way our students, families, staff, and the broader Renton community have demonstrated resilience, commitment, and flexibility as we work together to support our students and families. And what this pandemic has also reinforced is that the staff in the Renton School District does not do this work alone. To the contrary, we are blessed to receive support from many community organizations, especially the Renton Schools Foundation, that is vital to the success of each student we are privileged to serve each school day. And the Renton Schools Foundation is only successful with your support, our individual donors and business community, both locally and regionally. In this video, we'll share how your continued support has helped Renton School District teachers, support staff, students, and families succeed through this challenging school year. Last spring, the importance of digital equity and access became even clearer to us. As students took home Chromebooks to connect with learning, we also needed to support them by providing them with hotspots in order to connect to the internet. Previously, we provided this to students in our one-to-one -one program in secondary, and we learned that many elementary families needed this support as well. Technology obviously has been the big one because we have a lot of families that I think get overlooked because when we're in person, you know, you don't ask if they have internet because 90% of the forms they fill out for enrollment or anything else like field trips, you know, we, we always send home a paper form. It was really great being able to say, hey, we're coming back, we're able to provide you Chromebooks, and we're also able to provide you a way to connect to the internet so that you can also get access to all of your learning support. So we gave them a Chromebook and said, this is how you're going to get logged into school every day. We gave them instructions on how to do it and the kids know what to do, which is again, why connectivity is important because if they don't have internet, they, they are also powerless to take ownership of their own learning. The kids were just so responsive because they want to be there. Being able to log into Zoom and to access learning resources has been essential for students. With the internet, students can engage with teachers and peers. They can access different learning platforms like Google Classroom or Canvas. They can collaborate and communicate, and they can practice math or read books from a digital library. Hi, this is Sarah Wiley. I'm a third grade teacher at Sierra Heights Elementary, and I've been asked to share a little bit about how in-home in learning has been going and um, how my class has used Mayan as a learning resource. One tool that's been really helpful when teaching virtually that I've also used in the classroom before the pandemic, but um, that I've found myself going to a lot more is our, um, our website, Mayan, that students can read eBooks on. So this resource has been really helpful because in the classroom I have, of course, like a whole classroom library of print books and chapter books and students love to go book shopping and pick out their books that they're going to read for their book box each day. And at the start of the year, I was not sure how I was going to be able to do that. And we have the opportunity to send materials home so I can create book bags and send home, but I didn't find that uh, many of my students or families were interested in doing that, they'd have to make a trip out of their way to come to the school to get materials. So having Mayan was really helpful. It is really helpful for that because there are books that are of high interest to students. So there's a lot of graphic novels and um, books with great illustrations and great stories that I'm able to share with students. So I can um, show them how to go into Mayan and search for books that they want to read. Or I can give them book recommendations on Mayan. And the other thing that's really helpful is that you have basically an unlimited number of copies of books. So for example, my class is researching right now and writing informational essays. And so I'm able to share a book about penguins, for example, and every kid has their own copy that they can look at. Um, 
and there's uh, tools as well, like they can highlight the text. Um, there's all the text features that a regular book would have, like tables of contents and diagrams and illustrations and everything. So um, that has been a really important tool for my students to use during this time of virtual learning. In the fall, we found that the hotspots that we'd used in the spring were no longer sufficient to meet our students' needs, whose time online had increased. We needed to purchase different hotspots without a data cap so that our students were able to participate fully. Through our partnership with the Renton Schools Foundation, we were able to fund this digital equity and access initiative. We appreciate the partnership so much. It makes a huge difference in the lives of our students and families. Thank you, Renton Schools Foundation. So STEM education in elementary schools can look a lot of different ways. Something that's really important for us to be mindful of is the shift with the next generation science standards and students moving from learning about science content to really figuring out what's happening in the world around them through the phenomena that they're investigating. And one of the ways we're doing that is having students engage in instruction with our newly adopted curricula that's very hands-on and bringing those sense-making opportunities front and center for students as they're making sense of the world. So for example, in second grade, there is a question students focus on about how do we stop um, soil from washing away? And so by engaging and learning about the um, elements of soil and sand and their properties, students are able to better investigate the problem around how we stop the real world problem of erosion from happening and saving these sand towers um, from eroding away using a stream table. In fifth grade, that looks similar by looking at how do we move water to those in need and being able to build a water filtration system to meet that need. So the materials to the Renton Schools Foundation is also an element that's super supportive of those sense-making opportunities for students and that it allows students to engage in the learning in whatever learning environment they are in. And it also allows teachers to thoughtfully plan and implement instruction to support those sense-making opportunities through hands-on instruction. Yeah, I am Alexis Rios. I am a second grade teacher at Honeydew Elementary. Um, I know so many students get so excited about STEM and science, like it's just, they want to be hands-on. So to have them watch videos, it's like, they're not getting that full experience. And so it was really challenging to um, try and figure out ways and look ahead and think of how we can get materials into their hands and um, manipulating and doing it on their own. Because I mean, what fun is it to watch other people just do it on their own? <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> Let's have them create their own erosion experience. So um, we sent out little baggies of like cotton balls, toothpicks, um, popsicle sticks. They were gonna create like a barrier. And, um, and then they had this little paint tray. So they would put the uh, soil there and then they would um, have their own personal water and they would try and create a barrier and see which materials worked best um, to keep the soil from, or the water from running. And it was just, they loved it and they've enjoyed it. Um, it was a lot better and more, they got more fulfillment from doing it on their own. Um, sorry to the parents with the best, but they were happy and they were able to see it in their own eyes and having it in front of them and not on a video. So hands-on learning experiences in science really support students in multiple ways. And one of those ways is allowing students to engage in the thinking and the work of scientists and really being able to see themselves as scientists as they're connecting to their diverse funds of knowledge. Not only do we want to have them see themselves as scientists in the classroom in elementary school, but we want them to be able to expand that vision, to be able to see themselves in STEM careers and to see themselves as making sense of problems and determining solutions in the world around them, in their communities. Renton Schools Foundation has supported these efforts by providing uh, funds to be able to purchase materials that can support the hands-on learning experiences for students across learning environments. And those materials are purchased and put together in kits per grade level, and then they are distributed to each grade for then teachers to be able to just to distribute to students um, so they can engage with science instruction in their home or in whatever classroom environment they're engaging in. This year we faced quite a few challenges working remotely, uh, as a lot of the teachers found. But CTE has been in a very fortunate position that uh, a lot of our, our students are so excited about the projects that they're working on that they tend to stay involved. 
and the students this year are able to work from home to design things uh, using CAD and uh, other software that they can create the files at home and send them to us. We can print them out on our 3D printer, on our laser cutter. They're also creating audio video work. Uh, they're creating sewing projects. They're creating cooking and baking projects. We're able to combine all sorts of different aspects of CTE in one larger maker club and create projects that are beyond the scope of any one of the classes that we've had. And it's been such a success that we're going to continue doing that even as we move forward back into in-person learning. Hi, my name is Addison and I'm interested in sewing and podcasts and like video editing and that kind of thing. Um, I think what a cool project would be for sewing would be to make my own t-shirt. Um, I think that would be really cool and then I could design it however I want. How Run the Schools Foundation supports uh, this effort is, is huge. Uh, for the last several years we've had our STEM summer camp going on where we've had different uh, kits that students have been able to work on during the summer camp and take home with them and try it at home. And we didn't know it at the time, but those kits tied in perfectly with what we need to do this year, where we were able to put together a robotics kit for students to take home and continue building their robots at home. We've also got other kits for them for construction, where they're building small models of the house. We've got some metalworking projects where they're actually creating uh, metalworks with metalwork pieces with rivets and all sorts of things going on at home. They've got some sewing kits that they've taken home to, to learn sewing skills. All these kits that uh, we got to prototype thanks to the support from the Renton Schools Foundation, has been pivotal in allowing us to continue the hands-on, project-based education that CTE is known for. Hey everyone, this is Brian Hoskins from Nelson Middle School and Lindbergh High School. I am uh, director of the choirs at both of the schools in my 21st year of teaching in the Renton School District. Um, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about some uh, amazing things that have happened during this remote learning time. Uh, one thing is, is that the students have shown that they are very resilient, as challenging as it can be. Uh, I kid you not, I have had students who have zoomed into a class from an airplane. I have students who have zoomed in from a car ride, students who have zoomed in from another state or another city where their families were for some time. And that really taught me about how much our students want to connect to our schools and our programs and about how amazing they are and the efforts they have made them and their families. Um, as far as being a music teacher this year, it obviously did not look the same. It doesn't feel the same. We're not able to do the same things. But the students have remained committed to part of the community of what it means to be in a music ensemble. Um, I still have large classes, 40, 50, 60 students, and daily the attendance rate is 85 to 95 percent of the students who zoom in every day. My main reason for loving choir is the fact that I get to do something that really makes me happy while still having the aspect of learning about music. Music in general has so many things to offer that you could just learn about that will not only get you good grades but also give you the ability to sing at a higher level. Even with having to do in-home learning, I can still practice and improve my music knowledge. Instead of singing in a group in school, you get to use a website that basically gives us the opportunity to not only make music for school, but also make music for ourselves, which in a way could be an improvement. And choir is a class that you can take with no knowledge of music that can still be fun and interesting. Hi there, my name is Brian Dyson and I'm the director of bands at Nelson Middle School and Lindbergh High School. I'd like to take this time to share with you how the Renton Schools Foundation has supported our programs and impacted student learning. First, I'd like to share a little bit about Smart Music. Smart Music is an amazing online platform with a huge database of music that we use every day in the band program. It's been a great tool as students uh, record and get immediate assessment. They can also record and submit their, uh, submit their work to their teachers uh, for assessment as well. The database of music has helped, has helped keep things uh, engaging and lively as students have found their own music to work on, and it's just been overall a really great tool. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about the different musical instruments that have been purchased for our programs by the Renton Schools Foundation over the last number of years. And I cannot tell you how refreshing it is to be able to, to, be able to replace old and used instruments with new ones that will sound better and allow students to have a better experience. 
it is such a rewarding experience to see those kids get excited when they get a new instrument and to hear the difference in their playing. It's been a game changer and we're thankful for it. Music is important to me because it helps me express who I am as a person and it also cheers me up whenever I'm not in a good mood. Music being provided by the school is important because it helps me expand my music knowledge and helps me grow and get better as a singer, which is very important to me. The Renton Schools Foundation has been an absolute blessing as we've worked to uh, have great and equitable music education in the Renton School District. And on behalf of the band teachers in our district, all I can really say is thank you. After watching these videos, I hope you can see why our community should be so proud of the work of Renton School District students and staff since last March. Additionally, you should be proud of the role you and the Renton Schools Foundation have played in helping to make this happen. Brian Hoskins, the choral director at Nelson Middle School and Lindbergh High School, has shared that one of his goals this school year has been to make sure that students and staff come back better once the pandemic ends. This is what you have done and have the opportunity to do again today. Help ensure that our students and staff come back better. And what a special opportunity that is for each of us. It's hard to believe that we're unable to have our annual breakfast with you again due to the pandemic. Renton Schools Foundation is committed to its partnership with all Renton schools, providing as many supports as possible as students begin to return to their classrooms. Can you give a gift today that not only helps our students to come back better, but also sets them on a trajectory for greater opportunities in the future? Thank you and mark your calendars now for Monday, April 25th for the lucky 13th annual fundraising breakfast.